Uh, good evening and welcome to our school committee meeting of this December 19th, 2018. Uh, we'd like to call the meeting to order at 7 o'clock. If we'd all rise, please, for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. Um, before we bring our student representatives up, I just want to remind everyone that we are being broadcast live on cable and recorded for later um, rebroadcast. Um, and now I'd like to bring our student representatives up from the middle school. We have Katie Huff and Molly Hare. And you can slide that microphone over in between us. Hello, my name is Molly Hare and I'm an eighth grade student. I'm here along with Katie Huff, who is also a seventh grade student. We are here from Douglas Middle School to discuss the current events throughout the past month. Everyone is settling in and adjusting to the new schedules. The students have moved right into this year and are having many laughs with their friends and teachers as well as challenging learning experience to help them grow. The sixth graders have been working extremely hard and adjusting to the middle school. Many have become very close with their teachers and have made many new friends. The seventh graders have been boosting their grades higher and higher every day. They also have been much more active in making change to their community. Lastly, the eighth graders have been trying their very best in their grades, athletics, and, and are creating many new friends. The middle school activities are truly begun. The LEGO Robotics team had their first LEGO League competition on December 8th at Northboro High School, where they had an excellent time to get to know each other as well as learn. Moving into the indoor events, the girls and boys basketball teams have officially been chosen. The girls and boys had their first game on December 13th in Uxbridge. They worked very hard and definitely enjoyed themselves. There, are, there was also a basketball game for both boys and girls yesterday, which was in fact a home game. At this game, the girls lost, but still did unbelievable. The boys had won their game and were very proud of themselves. The Douglas basketball teams for the middle school are going very well, but they're still working to be even better. There are some eighth graders who happen to be on JV team in high school and are definitely enjoying the challenge. The girls JV team is on a winning streak of three games. We also have our th three of our eighth grade students on the high school indoor track team. They did incredible at their first indoor meet. They did very well. In fact, all of our middle school students had gotten a personal record. Overall, the sports have really taken to new heights. Our student council has been preparing and working to the best of our capabilities to prepare our Winter Olympics this Friday where all the students are going to be playing games and working in teams to get to know each other as well. We had a specific group of people that have been working on a food drive. As it turns out, we collected 307 pieces of food to donate to a local charity. We have been making many plans for this year and hope to, and hope to make the upcoming months some of the best ones in the school. We are planning for bigger and better things and know that we, that we will make it happen. This Friday, the 21st, is a half a day for our middle school, and we'll meet again in January with a whole new theme of the month to work towards, which is, in fact, being adaptable and accepting challenge. This past month, everyone has been working to be charitable. By charitable, I mean everyone is trying to be kind and give kindness to everyone. It was a great month to share the gift of giving and to share happiness throughout the school. Our school has been trying our very best to make this a memorable year for the 8th graders and a new beginning for the 6th. Overall, this has been a great month filled with kindness and positivity. We can't, make, we can't wait for the months ahead. Thank you for your time. It was much appreciated. Have a great night. Thank, Thank you, you. Ladies. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the update. Um, next on our agenda is our public comment and communication section. Um, the school committee always welcomes public comment on items that are within the scope of the school committee's responsibilities. Um, the public comment agenda is reserved for this purpose. So seeing no one for public comment, we'll move on to any old business anyone would like to address from the committee, any new business. Okay, in that case, we'll move on to our superintendent's report. Mr. Mays. Very good, thank you. Um, so one thing I w should mention yesterday was a very exciting win for the boys' team, double overtime, I believe, against Menden Upton. Boys' basketball? Boys' basketball. Yeah. I, I didn't get there for the, for the girls' game. I don't know how the girls did. You're talking about I know high school well. or middle school? Because yeah. both school. were very interesting. Middle school, yes. Middle school, yeah. I happened to catch a little bit of that, and I didn't see the cheerleaders perform, but uh, they, they had their first game. They did very good. Good, Great. good. So um, 
the, I, I was going to provide a quick update on Douglas Elementary School music lessons because, as you know, we came back and we were right. looking for it, so I was, I was going to report back once we get everything settled in. So presently there are 64 participations. They may be playing more than one instrument, but there are 64 participations, 17 playing the saxophones, 16 playing the trumpets, 15 playing the flute, six trombones, five clarinets, three percussions, two French horns, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> You that? I thought it was going to be really coy. So the partic participation is great. The, the great numbers, 64, is really, really strong. Um, and, 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 and as a, a springboard to that, we should also talk about the concert that took place the other night at the middle school and also th at the high school that, that were big numbers. I forget the number. I think there's 60 some odd students in the band at the, at the no, maybe it's the chorus. Yeah, okay. In, in, so middle school? So, you know, I, I only mention that because of all the, in, all the time we've talked about trying to rebuild the program. It's clearly is turning around and we, we, we're really getting some strong participation. Great. So that's the update on the music lessons. The next thing I have there is, uh, is an update on the uh, Sutton Douglas football uh, cooperative. Because there's been a lot of talk going on, a lot of rumors going on, so I'm going to try to uh, give you a little background and what I've heard and, and where we're going. So as you may or may not be aware, about six years ago, seven years ago, I forget what it is, I think it's six years, we joined in a co-op with Sutton in, 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 in for football. Previous to that, we had been in with Bartlett for a few years, and then they, um, um, they ceremoniously ushered us to the curb. So we ended that, we went in with Sutton, uh, Sutton is the host school, which is very important. They are the, the school that assumes all of the responsibilities for the program. We are simply co-oping in with them. About two years ago, uh, Brian Genesi, who was the uh, co-AD at the time with Mary Sokol, and I ended up going over to a meeting with the superintendent of schools, uh, Ted Friend, Ted McCarthy, the principal, and um, uh, I, I forget who the AD at the time was, no longer the same AD, and then a representative for the football boosters. And at that time, there was discussion of Sutton was looking to end the football program. Um, the boosters club was very vehement about keeping the program, and we've stayed in the football program has stayed in place for two more years. Over the Past month, there's been some conversations about whether or not Sutton was going to continue to offer the football co-op or not. Um, interestingly, we were really not part of any of that conversation. That's why I say that this is all sort of uh, was, was from the outside. We, we got wind of it, and then we became involved in it. Um, there's been some rumblings that Sutton was looking to end the co-op and move into a co-op relationship with Millbury. Primary reasons, field space, expense, numbers, overall performance of the teams. The teams have not been winning very many games. Um, they reached out. I believe there was some, some communication between Sutton and Millbury. Uh, they talked about it at, at some length. And um, Mary heard of some rumblings that possibly Sutton was going to end its football program and they were going to join up with Millbury at which point I became involved because the concern there was there was absolutely no statement of what was going to happen to the Douglas kids who have been playing Sutton football either for a year or for three or four years, now not having a place <coughs> to play football. Traditionally, what would happen is that they would be grandfathered in, which means that they would go along to the, uh, with, with, the, um, with Sutton to play at Millbury. Um, the issue that, raise, that that raises is numbers of students under the MIAA regulations and the possibility that if Douglas were part of that, it might move Millbury up to a higher level, tougher competition, which they really do not want to do. They're just looking for some more players. So it, it appeared that uh, for all intents and purposes, they had struck a deal um, but left us again by the curb. It did not include us in, the, in this in the process. So I reached out to the superintendent, um, asked him what the story was. Um, he then realized that a disservice was being done to the to the Douglas kids. Um, spoke with his athletic director, who then spoke with Milbury, and um, the concern still was was the Douglas participation going to impact Milbury. 
I met with the superintendent just two weeks ago um, as part of the Douglas, the um, Blackstone Valley uh, meeting for superintendents. He indicated that if we do not, if we're not, our players are not grandfathered in, he said that they would not go forward with the relationship with Millbury, which was new because originally that was not the case. Um, there had been some, comp there's been some rumors going around that we had reached out to Bartlett to try to become part of their football co-op again. Uh, that never happened. We did not reach out to anybody. Uh, we have not received anything formal or official in writing from Sutton that their football program has been disbanded as of yet. They had a school committee meeting the same two weeks ago uh, to which they had a large turnout, again, of the parents of the football boosters looking for the football program to continue. At the meeting that I had with Ted just recently, he is of the mindset that they are not going to continue the football program in Sutton. Hello. Join us, Mr. Sokol. Join us. <laughs> um, he felt that at this point, it just was not feasible to continue the football program and that he was, uh, uh, was adamant that they would only join Millbury if now the Douglas kids who were in the program were grandfathered in. To which, off the, off the record, we basically just, I indicated to him that I need something formal because Mary cannot pursue another opportunity for our students without ending the co-op that we're presently in. And, and so at this point, um, I think he had another meeting coming up, so he probably met this week with his boosters and so forth. My, I did not hear anything as of yet from him, so I don't know whether or not it has been disbanded. So then the question becomes, if that is in fact the case, that the kids who are in the program are grandfathered, they have a place to go, and then if we want to continue football, students who are coming into the school district would have an opportunity, we'd have to go and explore another co-op opportunity, of which there really are only a few possibilities. Um, to me, the only ones that seem viable, I, I told Mary that I was not interested in going back to Bartlett only because we had been with them and they ended the relationship. Yeah. So the two possibilities that I see are Uxbridge and probably Blackstone Millville. Uh, geographically speaking, it makes the most sense. Um, my, my, my feeling is that as hard as it might be to, to fathom, I mean, we played football with Sutton, so how hard can it be for us to play football with Uxbridge at this point? I mean, we, we don't get along very well with Sutton in the first place. So, so um, those are the two options that we have, and we're, all we're really waiting for, because it's really inappropriate for us to go out and pursue a co-op if we do not have something that definitively says our co-op is, is, is over. Right. So that's kind of where we're at, Mary. I don't know if you want to I, I, I chime in a little bit. I basically talked about the rumors that we hadn't really pursued anything and, and so forth, that a lot of what was going on was behind the scene, and we were really not part of the process. Sound fair? That is fair. That's Mr. Romano coming in from, from yeah. the game as well. Um, yeah, um, Mr. Romano found out um, we were at a game and he shared it, uh, an email that he received that they were no longer going to want to have the co-op. I had not any idea as the athletic director that this was going to happen. And then I heard from the Sutton athletic director pretty much what Mr. Maines had said. We were, not, we were out of the loop the entire process. And it's not something that happens in a week. It's, yeah, no. They had been talking for a long time. So the, their booster club is very upset by it because their word is sustainability, but they've got numbers, so now they have to deal with their booster club. We really, we're like the cart, we follow the horse, we don't really, right. it's just our kids. My goal is to have a place for our kids to play that are actually playing now, which is probably the most important. Um, and then if, like Mr. Main says, if there are kids interested pursuing a, a, an additional co-op. And that's how um, Millis, and Hopedale, Hopedale. It used to be, they went to, they merged with BMR and those kids finished playing at Millis and then now it's BMR and Hopedale. So it's nothing that hasn't been done before. Right. Okay. So it's just a transition period that the boys that are rostered now will finish in Millbury. And then if there's any new students that want to play, um, I'd have to find a place for them to play. Yeah, so that, my question was when it comes to being grandfathered, it's currently rostered, not just, not just anyone Currently, in nine through twelve right now. Correct. So if you're a tenth grader didn't play this year, Correct. you're not part of the grandfather. You'd Correct. have to go to a new program or, or whatever it might be. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, and, and so for the MIA numbers issue, they would only count 
the, the, the seven or eight kids from Douglas that are presently playing, the kid. we have eight they wouldn't count the 200 playing. boys we have in the school. They would only count the seven so that or shouldn't eight. Impact that shouldn't impact. So it doesn't change there. Okay. So, and I don't, I have heard nothing since the conversation uh, last week that I had with the superintendent in uh, Ted Friend over in, in, in Sutton. And as I said, Mary, before you come up, he was pretty, he was pretty much telling me that they were not going to continue with a football program oh. because of the reasons, the finances, the, the revenue, the, the, the wear and tear, and, the, and, and not, not really having a facility, um, and a few other things. So they were, they were looking to sort of the numbers, participation numbers and performance. So that's kind of where, where that was at. Now, behind the scenes, we really can't seek out opportunities, but I'm pretty confident that one of those two schools would accept Blackstone, us. Millville is Blackstone already with Millville. Hopedale? Yes. So, so be they're a, presently be with three. Hopedale. Oh, right. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And, and Uxbridge, Uxbridge is, is obviously in a different league. They play in the Swickle League, so we would be playing in a different league than, than the um, Dual Valley Conference. That's the only differential there. Um, but their, Uxbridge's numbers have gone down and their enrollments have gone down as well. So they they see that as a as a viable it's obviously it's closer yeah the proximity um, is, is a bonus um, mm -hmm. so it, it could work out so we would have to come back to you again at some point if if this co-op is disbanded a we'd have to uh, let you know that up front and then uh ask for your permission for us to go out and pursue an additional co-op if if that's the case of where we're at and we can never be a host school right well we could be we would have it, a lot but of this. I, I, yeah. It would cost us an awful lot of money. Yeah, money. In the field space, we I, we really don't have the field space as much as it would be awesome. Um, we have you know the, the track field, which the, mostly uh, is primarily the JV uh, soccer field. Right. And if we have to dedicate mm -hmm. that to football, because they need to practice every day, also, um, we have four. We would have four teams. You know, some kids going later, and just the wear and tear on that one field would be very very. Um, that would be a lot for. That would be field. your practice field as well as your game. As your game field. Field. We, we would need to find a yeah. practice field because you, you really couldn't practice on there. Having coached football for 20 years, you can't practice on the game field because you won't have a game field. Yeah, yeah. And, there's, it. and it's just it's difficult. There's no locker rooms for the opposing team to come and dress. There's no locker rooms, and the traffic up there pattern now is already, you yeah. know, right. um, yeah. challenging. Yeah. And you know, it's just, yeah. you know, the, the benefit is it's a gated facility, so the gate would be easy to keep, which they couldn't do over in Sutton. They could never charge. It was just hodgepodge because it's oh, in the okay. middle of the field. Yeah. Um, it's just, um, the lo you know, I, I don't think it'd be possible. You know, it'd just be very difficult to, to have that in soccer and everything mm -hmm. on just two fields. I mean, if we had a different field, like Mr. Main said, that uh, would. Yeah, and the other, the other yes. part of it, Julie, is that it, we, we don't really have huge numbers of participation so to be the host kids, you really yeah. want to have the, the majority of the kids yeah, you're, and somebody to supplement in. it yeah. i mean i think if we if we were lucky we might i think at the high point a couple of years ago we had 20 some odd kids yeah. throughout the entire program but we're nowhere near that number now we have nine yeah. are, the, are the currently rostered um students aware of what's oh, yeah. going on oh, yes okay. and they were so. they were they were um caught by surprise after their game the yeah. coach called all the parents in and, and told okay. them that it was no one so they they know um and I spoke to parents. They asked to speak with me, so I met with a couple of parents individually and at, answered the questions, being as transparent as I possibly could be, yeah. so they understand that we mm -hmm. we're really not involved in right. the planning of disbanding the Sutton Douglas mm -hmm. football team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, thank thank you for the update. A, a couple kind of maybe related, I guess, questions. So, I, I'm not surprised to hear that numbers are, are down. Youth, mm -hmm. youth football overall, I, I think, is down. This is going to become a problem for more and more communities um, as this goes forward. Um, I, I, I want to say, I, I, at the very least in Texas, they do like seven on seven leagues and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Is, is Massachusetts exploring anything like that to help with participation like rates and no. going more in the flag football yeah, route versus the tackle football route? In my and, community, they do the flag football. They've done, yeah. they went away at, with at the high, At the high school level? No, in the oh. middle school and the lower grades, yeah. they have a flag okay. football league. Yeah. And then our, our kids do have an opportunity to play locally. I think it's Millbury. Did anybody know? No. I th that's I the million think it's dollar Millbury. question um, for, <coughs> for youth football. Um, they can play. I mean, they do it. Oh, no, probably, I think the it's North like Bridge? four different programs that advertise in town. Yeah. Right. I think Oxbridge, Northridge. Uh, but when Webster I went down to the middle school, yeah. Um, yeah. Sherry, Mrs. Ostman, um, asked how many kids were interested. Oh, I know that, but and she had yeah. no one to sign up. So that's where I got my number of. Yeah. No interested parties, yeah. but then it was brought to my attention by uh, Mrs. Hayes that there are kids that play that maybe they weren't listening. That's why I had asked. 
yeah. Mr. Romano, maybe asking Donna somehow to get a survey out if there's any interest so we know maybe grades three through eight, how many kids actively play some kind of football mm -hmm. if it if it's, you know, so we have some numbers moving forward. If Sutton I think says I, I know of at least a half dozen at the elementary school level that, that are playing right now. Right, um, so they want, we want them to have a path to continue. Right. We don't want to lose them to go to some other school because so. we don't offer football yeah. in a co-op or something else. So I think it's going to be harder and harder to full, field full 11-on-11 11 11 football yes. you know, going forward. So, I think, mm -hmm. you know, again, at, at the state level, they, they got to explore some of, some of the 7-on-7 seven seven options and yeah. flag football options and whatnot. So if, if the situation were that they ended the co-op and we were able to establish, let's say, another co-op with, let's say, Uxbridge, um, the students who are presently grandfathered would have to make a decision at that point. They could opt oh, they to go to opt. Uxbridge. They don't have to go to, to Millbury. Right, they okay, mean, yeah, which makes makes sense, too. So they can stick with the rest of their Douglas. So they, they yeah. may want to go with, if, if we've got numbers, they could go to Uxbridge rather than staying with Sutton. Because Millbury would be a little bit of a ride. I mean, it's... Yeah, 15, 20 minutes to get them to get them there each day. Yeah. I'm not really a big fan of them being on 146, to be honest with you, either. So. And there's a lot of expectations that I know when I did speak briefly with the athletic director, he has a list of expectations. I've asked for the expectations three times, and I haven't gotten them yet. Yeah. So if practice is going to start at 2.30, yes, that's going to pose a problem. If it starts at 2.15, definitely a problem. But right. there's no need of pressing that issue until we find out. They have a vote, I think it's in January, if, they're gonna, if the Swickle is going to accept the grandfather co-op. Okay. Right. Co but I think the Sutton Boosters is pushing very, very hard for them to have it for two more years. Yeah. Like, and extremely. So is, is, there, is, is there an issue with the overall participation between Douglas and Sutton as well, or is it more the, the costs and the facilities for them? I guess, would, would they explore bringing a third school in? No, with, I, yeah. both no us I, think, and I think it's Sutton the cost. It's, it's, it's the good. cost. It's, yeah. it's the ruining of the fields. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's their choice to make. Although since we were out of the conversation, it's a little hard to pin down exactly what it is. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also unsure if, it, you know, is even the, is it tough to field a team even with the two, the two schools, to, you know, with Sutton and Douglas? Well, are they getting enough participation? You hear two different stories. The numbers say yeah. no, but other, everybody says yes. So it's, it's one, whatever they say, you know, it's, it's, I think we have number, we have nine, they have, I think 20. Maybe a little bit more, so I mean that that Which is, is enough. a viable team. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to free me up, I'm happy to take over the program <laughs> and coach it. Yeah. Happy to. It's been a while since I've coached. They don't wear leather helmets anymore, Mr. Means. No, no. <laughs> I think I think we found better use for your time. Right now. Well, I'm just saying there's, there's just an that. option. Um, <laughs> The other thing was that I, why we wanted to put this on, the, on this was, was to make sure that people in town knew that we were not the driving force behind any of this. There's yeah, no, a lot of rumor, there's a lot that. of innuendo out there as to what we were doing and the stuff behind the scenes. And I got to tell you, quite honestly, as, as Mary and, and Josh said, we were sort of blindsided by it. Yeah. And we're trying to, you know, get ahead of it now at this point. So right. that's kind of where we're at. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions before we move on? Okay, thanks. Mr. Romano, they'll go. Okay, so the last thing I have under the superintendent's report is an update on the Blackstone Valley Superintendent's Collaborative. So um, they, they did have a subcommittee meeting, of which Josh is on that committee uh, recently. And then we had a meeting of the superintendents uh, last week. And so a quick update. As you recall, one of the things that we've been talking about is trying to collaborate on programs, courses, and so forth. So two things are in the works. The first is that during the April vacation, they're going to hold a technology engineering manufacturing camp for seventh and eighth graders. Uh, presently, they're holding two spots for each of the schools. There's 13 school districts, so it's 26 kids. If they have additional, then they will come back and look for some additional people. And it would be a three-day event. Um, Northbridge has manufacturing, um, the Ed Hub has it, and Uxbridge has it. And we could also, we could also host, that host it as well because yeah. we have the manufacturing here as well. Yeah. Okay. And so the, the, the process there is to get the relationship between the 13 communities started. And this is, this is also to let the, the students in 7th and 8th grade know that there are engineering manufacturing possibilities should you stay in your home school because this is going to be that type of collaborative that we're talking about. So that was the first thing. The second thing was that they have agreed to pilot one, one course 
in the 1920 school year. Again, it will be based around manufacturing. Uh, it'll be an online course, but there will be some face-to-face -face meetings um, either in the Ed Hub in Northbridge at Northbridge High School, Uxbridge High School, and again, we can host it as well. Um, the, the, the consensus was there of the 11 schools that were present at the meeting. Uh, 10 were obviously were, were in favor of it. Blastone Valley Technical <coughs> Vocational Regional High School doesn't really need to go with us for a collaborative on manufacturing. Uh, and two schools were not there. But the general consensus was that we wanted to have that be the jumping off point to see if in the 2021 school year, can we now expand? Is it, is it, is it something that we can grow and expand upon and, and, and start offering more courses? Um, one other last piece that I'll share with you that I'll throw it to Josh is that when we were talking last week, of all the schools that were there, only one school did not at, at some point do the, the Massachusetts Math Science Initiative. So they're, all the schools except for one we're familiar with the whole Saturday model of kids going to a school and having an extended learning opportunity or a lab ap activity. And all of the schools felt that because of that experience that they think that maintaining this and offering courses and having Saturday sessions will work. Some of the things that come out of it are collective bargaining agreements, are funding, and forming a, a, forming a, a collaborative in, in deciding you know, what we're going to offer. And then if it's going to get off the ground on 2021, having somebody who would be a director of that, that collaborative to oversee the, the classes, student participation, the curriculum, and so on and so forth. So that's, I mean, we have been talking about the, the whole idea with the um, Ed Alliance. This looks like a much bigger picture, and, and, and it could be, um, you know, a, a leading activity for the state. because. People are asking us about it now. Yep. Where are you guys with all of this? So, um, you know, that's kind of what I had, Josh. I mean, you had gone to the meeting and you've been doing some work on pathways and so forth. Mm -hmm. If you want to update the committee. At, at the um, subcommittee's meeting, we, we also talked about that if, if we can get the manufacturing to work, which requires a lot of equipment, which requires a lot of infrastructure, um, it's too easy to get like an AP microeconomics course running. And that maybe doesn't require the, so many of the Saturdays and in-person things, but it could be almost entirely online with uh, you know, the teacher has some office hours in the afternoon where they're available to talk to kids. It can be virtually, so the whole thing could be um, essentially online. So we're almost looking at, it's it's like a VHS, but it's more receptive, a virtual high school, but it's more receptive because the, the, the teacher is one town over instead of you know yeah, 10 national, states over yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So um, you know, we looked at a couple of models, and we all have every school in this this um, possible co-op has something that they do that's that's fairly unique. Like we offer AP microeconomics now, and we're looking at um, some sort of horticulture and, and um, pre-vet. Actually, was a very popular thing in the survey that I did. We're looking at some things along those lines that other schools don't have as well, um, and the the possibility that even something like manufacturing that does require a lot of infrastructure, um, students from schools that don't have it, there, there can be multiple locations where they can go. So they just go to the closest one for the in-person piece, which could be us. We, we do have that, we have, it's uh, MACWIC is the certification. We have the capacity to give that, that certification. So, you know, we think it's, um, that there's some, there's some pretty great opportunities there and a couple different models that we're gonna look at. And, and I like the idea there's, the, the group that's that's pushing this is really pushing the idea, you know, pilot fast, fail fail fast, and then figure it out and fix it. Um, but I think the, the the plan to sort of phase it in, um, I think we can build some interest with the camp. I wish we had more seats that we could do. Um, but then it, I think moving into that first year, I think we can figure out what, what's going to work and what's not going to work. And I don't think you're talking a lot of money either. It, I think it's pretty short money for the opportunities that we'd be able to offer. Some transportation costs might be... You know, because there will be a face-to-face -face component. But uh, right. when we when we did the face-to-face -face with the MIMSI, um, we secured buses for our students to get there. We shared buses actually with some of the other the other area towns to get them over to the the face-to-face. -face and those meetings were, you know, those those were six seven hours. I mean, we, how, many, how many students would you have participating at a time with something like that? In the, in a MIMSI? Yeah. Going across. Well, we depending upon which one it was. So AP Chem, you might have seven or eight kids, but right. AP English, you might have. 35, 40 kids. Right. So it depend upon which, which, which course you were, was meeting on the, on the Saturday. Yep. 
I, I think um, it's the same with this too. You know, Hopedale. I think is it Hopedale that's getting Hopedale's the, the one that did forensic Mimsy. Okay, but they're looking at. Are they the ones that have the possibility to get the forensic? Lab. Yes, they do. So, have, they get a grant for a forensic lab. They have a grant for a forensic lab. Well, they don't have enough kids to offer to have that lab occupied all right. day. But you know, I just I just did a survey, and out of the, the the first forty kids that that filled out the survey, there were thirty six, I think, that wanted some sort of criminal justice and forensics yeah. coursework. So, you know, not everybody can build a forensics lab, but if we can share that resource, you know, Hopedale has that. But then they come here for something that we offer, the MacWick piece, for example. So. That's that's kind of the idea. Yes, yeah, so we're always going with that. I guess the question of busing is, you know, if, if we have one student participating in a program in then Millbury, we would, yeah, we, we would do a waiver bus form, and the one, parents would have to drive them. Okay, there okay, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. But if you have big yeah, numbers, we, we, we were taking family. buses, much like we did with the athletics. The agreement with the with the committee was that yeah. if you've got one student who's qualified for the state meet, and it's it's you know for golf and so forth, yeah. you sign a waiver and you're not sending yeah. a whole bus. They go okay. on their own. Okay, right? yeah. thank you. Um, but the other piece, that, based on our conversations this morning in our, in our admin meeting, was that um, we're now at the time where it's, when it's, we're starting to talk about budget season and so forth. And um, one of the things that we've been very clear in all of this was that, that there are going to be some needs within our own district that is going to help us to continue to move ourselves forward. This is one of those that is outside the box, but it is all part, it's all part of that whole plan we had for moving forward, which was really looking at about a five-year time schedule. Um, so hopefully, um, you know, we can we can do a good job of talking with the, the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, as well as, as, as your committee, to see the real value in going forward in, in really promoting these. And there may be some additional staffing that would come out of it, minimal, but it would help us. So that's going to be a piece of it. There will be some budgeting, for example, on our contract. If Brian McGrath were to teach that AP micro as an additional course our, under our contract, there's a $6,000 stipend for teaching that course. Right. Now, each district has different things, so we'd have to sit down and work with all of our individual districts to figure out, okay, what does that mean to, to Kevin Maines to teaching an additional class and, and get an agreement with the, with, the D, with, with the teachers associations in all the districts to make it all work. Right. So there is some legwork. That's why we're waiting for the 2021 year to make it, to make it happen if we can. Yeah. Um, but I, but I, again, I, I think that really on the on the cutting edge and really uh, an interesting direction that we're going because what ends up happening is those things that when Josh does the signups and students sign ups for for course enrollments and all of a sudden he finds out he's got three kids that are interested in AP microeconomics we're talking about. Well, he may not be able to offer that AP microeconomics, right. but maybe now he can. For the six thousand dollars, our three kids take it, and perhaps ten, twelve other kids have an interest, and now it's 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 viable, and everybody pays in to the cost of the teaching and so forth. Right. We share the expenses. Right. Um, I forgot to ask you this one. Did they talk about the early college at that meeting? They too? did a little bit. Yeah. Because so, North Northbridge, I think, has they the, so community. Yeah, Quinsigamond Community College has a an early college program where basically high school kids can take college courses and they they pay a very small amount of money I, I think it's five hundred dollars for the course usually this what's happened usually is the schools will pay for their books um, they meet once in person um, basically it's the just the, the, the introductory uh, introductory lesson the rest of it's done online um, Northbridge doesn't fill their seats QCC is letting them continue to operate they, they want to have 20 people in a class they're letting them operate with 11 12 they've offered those seats to other places and so that is another model that we can use to collaborate I, I told her that we're very interested in doing that um, yeah. well we've talked about early seats. college for a number of times now so I think anything we can get to get it started to jump start it is, is a real plus no again I think it's it's really smart to again just we, economies of scale are, are right. the biggest kind of obstacles that all of our communities are, are dealing with I think yeah. with these things so the more we can you know and that's a huge with, you know yeah it's a huge opportunity where and it's gonna cost us you know a couple hundred bucks for books and a couple hundred dollars for a bus and we, we you know we, we've got kids getting college credits yeah, for right. very short money so that's great and you have a follow-up um, subcommittee meeting January uh, first uh, second week in January yeah, so, so we'll with regards to the to the April um, break um, camp um, are there a certain number of seats available to Douglas specifically have they figured Would that we out two? Um, I, w I was told two for each district two for each district okay right um, and they'll revisit that, and, and that's that's what the next meeting. We'll get more information out of that next meeting, the subcommittee meeting, as they really work out the uh, the finer points. 
but I'll tell you, uh, uh, one of the things that is very different about this in, in, in you know, whether I've been in principal's meetings or now superintendent's meetings is uh, there's a lot of talk, but not a lot of action. This one has got, yeah. has some action going with good. it. So that's the important piece is that there's, there's interest and there's, there's people who are actively working on, on all of this. So I think it's... Um, have, have, has the subcommittee addressed, um, I guess, uh, admission or selection criteria? Yeah, if you, if you do have no. limits on seats and, you know, more than you can buy. Right, so they're going to, that's, that's, that's a great that problem to have. Would be about. No, it would be great, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. No, we didn't, we didn't talk about that. There, yeah. So. Yeah. Great. Thank you for hanging around, Mr. No, Romano. thank you. I'm going to go down and play bongos with the band. and. Okay, well, <laughs> Maynard G. Krebs. <laughs> Maynard G. Krebs. Those who might know who that is. Anybody? Anyone? Um, Anyone? Anyone? No. no. Anyone? <laughs> That's Mr. Krebs. Maynard G. Krebs? <laughs> Nobody? Yeah. I'm too young. Toby Gillis. Toby Gillis. Oh, oh God, yeah. That's, I'm too young for that. Toby Gillis show <laughs> Bob Denver. It was Gilligan. Oh. Gilligan, it was Gilligan. I know. Okay, that, but that anything be before Maynard G. Krebs. Yeah. He was a beatnik on Toby Gillis. He played the bongos. He wasn't nearly uh, as good as me. <laughs> <laughs> good night, folks. Thank you. Good night. So that's that's the superintendent's report. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Mr. Maine. So with that, we'll move to our consent agenda. We have our December fifth meeting minutes. And so about the school, school committee, committee, subcommittee, oh. school committee, subcommittee, school committee, subcommittee. Over entire section. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, our school committee subcommittee report. First, a council table report. Thank you. Okay. On the sixth, I signed fifteen batches totaling three eighty four four fifty oh one. And on the 13th, five batches totaling $150,099.56. Excellent. That's about it. Getting busier, huh, as we mm -hmm. go along? Any questions on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, from a budget subcommittee, I haven't typed up my notes yet. I apologize. I'll have those for us for next time. But um, we had a few topics, um, primarily technology, which we're going to have Don up in a little bit to talk about that. Um, a discussion of some technology needs um, both for the current year as well as going into next year and even a little bit longer term planning around technology. Um, we discussed um, the Appendix A um, grid for the, the steps and, and lanes and just the, the upcoming um, um, negotiations and meetings with, with the DTA on that in order to kind of get, get those, those steps and lanes leveled out a little bit. Um, and I think, uh, do we have any word on, on target date for a meeting Two dates yet? to consider is the 15th or the 17th. Of January? Of, of January, yes. So if you could get back to me, maybe look at that, and if you get a chance to get back to me tomorrow, I can then reach out to them. They are thinking they were originally were, their, their committee seems to be dwindling a little bit. It was originally going to be five, and now it looks like it's going to be three, maybe four. Okay. So whatever their number is is the number that we would have. So. Okay. Uh, We'll go from there. So I'll, I'll know better uh, probably in a week or so, so I can let you know. And, Sounds good. Um, but I would I think it would be myself, Courtney, and, and the two of you if it's four, and one of the two of you if it's three. Okay. Sounds good. Um, we also discussed a very brief discussion of these town budget expectations and, and just where we are there. We don't really have a lot right now, but just, you know, getting prepared, knowing that um, it is budget season, um, so now it's coming up. Um, just uh, the discussion around buses and whether it makes sense for us to be um, leasing or owning any buses, um, whether it be for, for regular transportation or special ed transportation. Just had, again, a, a brief discussion around um, some of the pros and cons of that. Um, and then it wrapped up with just a, a bit of a special um, education um, conversation um, around um, some potential out-of-district out placements um, for this year and into, into the future. Well, so Assessments, but not necessarily, not yeah. necessarily placements at this point, but yeah. assessments. assessments on that. Um, and the other thing we talked about was buses was, was also possibly just vans instead of buses. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that, yeah. And, and again, I think with this collaborative, right. vans might, you know, make some like, more make sense, some sense as a transportation right. option, um, right. you know, for us. So, yeah. Um, so that was budget subcommittee update and then I, I just wanted to provide an uh, update on the uh, MASE um, conference that I went to it's actually MASE MASS joint conference right um, I was only able to t attend one day of the conference I, I had a pet emergency that um, got me home on, on the second day of it um, but I attended six sessions that first day it was it was very educational for me it was good um, I attended the role of the chair efficient meetings um, session, which Jillian will be thrilled about with the efficiency meeting side. I don't have to have her kicking me so much uh, <laughs> so I can, and keep things going. But um, some inter interesting stuff that I'll have some follow-ups, I think, for the whole group uh, on some things that um, came up during that. 
Um, the general session for everyone was just a, a post-election, post-mortem. Um, not, a, not a lot came out of that. It was, you know, just a, a, a lot of grumbling about kind of, you know, wh where things are nationally, politically, and but didn't seem like a lot of it really came down anything that would impact Douglas directly. Um, so it was, it was entertaining, but uh, not, not a lot learned there. Um, after that, I attended the MSC, MASC Division 4 meeting, so we're part of Division 4. Um, all got together there. Just to talk about, um, I guess Division 4 holds a couple sessions a year for all the schools in their division, for the school committee members. Just talk about topics that we'd want to cover. Um, one of the overwhelming one was school start times. I think there's several districts looking at later start times for their middle and, and high school. Um, but we also know that means earlier start times, potentially, at least for us, for your elementary and, um, and primary schools. Um, so in and out, they also feel it, it makes sense to have entire, you know, the, the entire district to go. It's, it, you know, especially with athletic schedules and whatnot, it's tough to have one school make a switch and everyone else doesn't, and when do practice time start? So they wanted to have a, a joint um, session uh, on that. Um, and then another session they looked at was promoting inclusiveness and, and reducing bullying. It's, I think it's a topic that I think our school is doing well on, but it um, mm -hmm. sounds like some schools were, were struggling with that. You know, so I didn't have any objections for us you know, participating in that. Next was high schools transitioning from traditional to st student-centered um, models. I was very excited about this session and was very disappointed in the end of it. And it was, a, it was, a, it was a, a teacher who had, I think she was working on maybe her doctorate, or whatever, this, she had done a bunch of research around this kind of just got to some conclusions I think we've already reached and some of the things we're doing already uh, almost seemed a little ahead of what she had to, to offer during the session, but it was good to see that uh, other folks, you know, thinking along the same ways. Um, and then the last was student vaping, which I think was like Oof. three days after we had our, our, our big student vaping issue. Oh. Um, just my learnings there. Um, jointly, the, the feeling was punitive punishments not really effective um, when it comes to um, preventing or, or, or reducing vaping. Um, there were some new state regs I think were introduced the week after the conference um, that will make it more difficult um, for um, youth, I think anyone under 21, to purchase um, the vaping materials. Um, and just overall ed education is key. Um, I did discuss, you know, some of the options we were looking at around in-house suspensions and, and um, education you know, ed education programs, you know, and a, a writing component to go with it. And, um, you know, folks seem interested in that, and I think some folks would probably even take it away and, and consider it themselves. Yeah, so. So Desi and um, uh, Matt have received some inquiries as to, you know, where we're at with it, the, you know, and um, there has been one or two students who have already at the high school have been part of it. I mean, the goal of it is, is A, to get them to understand the health risks associated with it, and B, is to, get, is, is to end the behavior. Yeah. Um, it's no different than when I was in school in the 1960s and 70s, um, with the cigarette hole idea. I mean, right. it's no different. Yeah, and, I, and you know, since it, it came up, I, I've noticed a lot more around, around ad campaigns, um, mm -hmm. similar to the ones that, you know, um, the, the truth that ad campaigns that kind of got to re really reduce the smoking, there's a lot more of that. Um, as well as I think my, my Facebook feed this week was filled with just articles around the dangers of vaping and, and whatnot, um, so. And we've explored some, um, some programs. Most of them are a little bit too expensive at this point. Um, but we can do. We we believe that we've got the people in house that can do some stuff, at yeah. community meetings and so on. So that's that's going to be our tact. Um, I actually have a um, a document that I think is a great document to, that I'd love to send home to middle school and high school parents because if I ask the kids to take them home, I might just as well throw them away. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we mail them out, I think it's really it's 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 a pr produced by the uh, the federal government, but it's very informative, very detailed, and it might be just enough for, for, for parents to look at and say, hey, wait a second, this really is pretty serious. Yeah. And, and then we can enlist their support a little bit as well. Yeah. But there's a, you know, to mail it, there's a cost <coughs> for mailing things out and so forth. So. Um, but overall, good concert, uh, good conference, you know, met some, some nice folks. I met some other um, school business managers, um, had some chats with them during, during dinners and lunch. I, I, sat, I had dinner with a bunch of folks um, from Cambridge. They, they, were, they were fascinated with Douglas. It was, it was like four of them at the table and just me from Douglas. And they, they had so many questions about Little Old Douglas. It's <laughs> crazy. Talk about different than Frank Dunn. Yeah, 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 night and day. Night and day. Yeah. 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 I, don't know. yeah. I mean, 
know, just yeah. just the diversity alone, and then not only that, the, the, the enrollment alone. Yes, yeah. 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 six hundred million dollars. Yeah, just the, the kinds of problems that we deal with. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I kept them entertained for a good Slightly forty-five minutes at dinner. <laughs> I've actually at, at that conference is the, the 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 first question is where's Douglas? Where is that? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And down yeah. by the three corners of the three states. Yeah. The, you know, mm -hmm. oh, oh okay. Oh, okay. And, uh, how big is your school? Yeah. Um, <laughs> about twelve hundred kids. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. the high school? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <In the> district. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's often what happens. But. Yeah. All right. So now we can move on to our consent agenda. Yep. And our first item there is our meeting minutes, which I failed to read today, so I don't know if anyone else had a chance to look at them and if any thoughts on errors or omissions with them. It was a fairly brief meeting on the 5th, if I remember correctly, so. Not seeing any issues. Folks want a couple more minutes to read through. I don't mind that. Mm -hmm. We're making pretty good time tonight. So. Mm -hmm. okay. If no one has any issues, I'll look for a motion. I move that we approve this full committee minutes from our December 5th meeting. Motion from Julie to approve. Second. Second from Kelly. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Seeing none. Okay. Next up, policy for use and improvement upon town properties and facilities. Um, so I we were e emailed this um, a few weeks ago, actually right after our last meeting. Um, from Suzanne King with the town. Looking for our input, As asking if we, are, if we had considered this yet. I'm like, this is the first I've seen of it, so we have not considered anything with it yet. Um, it seems like mostly a town policy. I think the the genesis of this policy was the the issues that happened over the summer with the, the painting of the Tiger mural down at the municipal center. So I think uh, out of that came a, an effort to um, kind of shore up the, their policy around um, making improvements to, to uh, town facilities. Um, there's not much here that concerns the school other than I think they're going to be looking to us to provide them um, with a list of, um, I'll, I'll read the paragraph. In, in the first instance, the Board of Selectment School Committee, Recreation Commission, Commission, Planning Board, Building Facilities Construction Committee, Cultural Commission, Historical Profession, Preservation Commission, and Cemetery Commission shall complete, compile a list of items that will be covered by this policy. The list will be collected by the town administrator and presented to the board of selectmen and placed on the board's agenda for public hearing. Um, so, Brett, we have uh, we've begun that process of okay. identifying that which might be considered historical, social, cultural, or otherwise. Okay. Um, do, do we need any help with that? So, I no, I, I think that I've asked each principal to sort of give me a, a rundown of yep. what's in their buildings. Um, I think we talked about it today at the meeting, and, and, and one of the things that we talked about was, so for example, the gym floor in, in, the, in, in the high school. Um, the logo was changed uh, probably two, three years ago. It now it resembles the logo that we have on all of our letterheads and everything. Yep. Um, so if something, if, if they were gonna you know, redo the floor, the understanding would be that they couldn't just change the the logo in the Senate in Senate court right. that it would have to go through a process to make sure that sure that we are being culturally sensitive in in and so forth yeah. as to what it fits in that category there's a plaque on the way in the in the building at the high school for the the building committee each of the okay. buildings have have those plaques and so okay. forth um, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of great big numbers of items and so forth um, you know, we were talking about the the class gifts that might be up there. So, for example, the the, the, the tiger and, right. and, and some of the other things that are in. There were right, some documents and, what, and yeah. so forth in, in some of the buildings. You know, um, Martin Luther King and yeah, the, yeah, yeah, Martin Luther yeah, King yeah, and Abraham Lincoln. Those paintings. Paintings. The entrance walls of the yeah. high school. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> there's a couple of pieces of, of art that are there that that would be considered. So just we've started compiling a list of things. There's no there's no original you know. Um, 
document from from the 1720s that's that's housed in our in our yeah. library or anything like that. Uh, we don't have any. There are some things. In, in, in uh, Cindy did mention that there were a couple of um, items in her her um, library um, uh, pictures that are in the uh, that are in a closet that were of the old Gleason Court and uh, uh, Gleason Building. I'm sorry. The old VFW school. I don't even know what the old VFW school was, oh, but okay. Yeah. But there's some things that, that that they have. But there's not a lot. But we'll make a list. Yeah. And we'll get it to the town administrator for. Okay. Compiling. And I, I guess the thing I was more worried about was things outside of our four existing buildings. So the old elementary school. Is there anything still there that needs to be preserved? Is there anything else in the municipal center that's that used to be a school that? We're aware of that. Maybe someone in the point. town isn't really aware of that. I, I that, thought everything came with us, but we could probably. Yeah, do that. that's that's uh, you know because again that that mural was an old mural from from yep. back in the days when that was a high school. Um, so, is, is there anything else there that that you know we might be aware of that the town isn't aware of that you know should be preserved in the name in the in the name of the schools? Okay. Um, so that, that, that's the part I was worried about more than the, the existing buildings. So we're, okay. we're, we're so we're on that process, um, which is what what came out to us, and uh, we will be compiling a list and um, uh, and basically, more importantly, we talked about being aware of yep. what's in your building and being aware if somebody's looking to make a change that there should be a process in place to don't just simply change it. Um, you know, much like we talked about the room downstairs changing the structure of that room, we didn't just change the structure of the room. We, we went through the committee to make sure that they were on board with us changing the structure of the room. That reminds me, at the municipal center, there's a large portrait there that, because I do a lot of research, historical yeah. research, that I took a picture of. My, Mike Gazinski was here, and I was starting to research in Boston to find out who that's a portrait of, because okay. nobody knows. Oh, This reminded person, me. Okay. I've got to get back to that at some point. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I guess we're just looking for a motion to a accept Right. Um, the policy, the town's policy, a, as written here, right. um, and to uh, agree to participate in the, the com compiling of the. I, I thought that's what she was looking for. That's the, that the committee has has voted to accept it. Yeah, um, that, that that's what I, I that's how I saw it. Um, so I'd be looking for a motion to accept the policy as written and agree to participate in the um, compiling of um, items uh, to be covered under the under the policy. You know, because the other piece of the, yep. not, not to get in the way of the vote is that the facilities use and so forth we have a facilities use structure and format in place this is really yeah. about the municipal center and other the library and things yeah such I think it's just that, saying that we, we don't have, no have any over. issue with the, with, with the right. town's policy they're looking for our feedback so I just you know, I think the formal way to give that feedback is to say that do we want to do we want to table it and find out whether they want us to take a formal vote yeah, on it I don't, or, yeah, 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 yeah I don't think that okay yeah. We so we, we can at least yeah. get back to them and say that we have yeah. discussed it. We okay. have a plan in place. Yeah. Are they yeah, I'll just let her know that we have we've discussed and we don't have any. Uh, well, do we have any issues with it? anyone seeing any concerns with that? So, so we'll I'll table we in no, case there's no a vote in case we need to vote later. At okay, a that's later. that works. Good. Um, and lastly, Donna, want to join us? We have a request for Chromebooks for the middle school. Yes, we are looking to buy 130 Chromebooks that will be used for testing at the uh, middle school for this year. For the, um, the current devices at the middle school are the iPad 4s. They are going to be no longer supported for testing. So by buying the 130 Chromebooks, which this is the model right here, um, we will be able to do one grade's worth of testing at a time with those Chromebooks. So it will enable us to keep up with um, our online testing. Mm -hmm. The, the self-contained keyboard is, a, is, a, is, a, is an important piece for us, um, but I think Donna's other point is that you need to have some certainty that a student's test is going to be completed and, and be transferred and, and be counted. And some of the iPad 4s are a little bit older, and there's no yes. we, a little concern that they may not be um, the best tool for us to Actually, do Actually, we are with. starting to have problems with them because um, as the batteries get old, they don't hold the charge for a long time. Yeah, okay. And we are actually starting to have troubles with kids who are taking longer to do the test, running out of charge, charge. That would be a um, major during attack. the test. Mm -hmm. 
and having to swap out devices in the midst of the test, which can be disruptive to the student. Okay. Sounds like something that we have to say yes to then. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's part of a, of, of a bigger perspective that we have as well. Right. I mean, it's, it's a starting piece. Um, mm -hmm. The plan would be that the, the, these would stay at the, at the middle school for this year for testing. Mm -hmm. And if we approve purchasing one-to-ones like we've had at the middle school going forward for the following year, we could then transition those down to the elementary school. Mm -hmm. They would then have the benefit of them for the testing down at the, at the elementary school, as well as being able to share them uh, within the grade level. So all four grade levels will get a certain number on a cart, so they would have an additional updated, more, more recent um, technology to use in their classrooms. Kind of a bigger picture of it, of it all. That's and good. all we need is some money. It's too bad that the state doesn't help fund something like that when they require it. Mm -hmm. There's no money out there, huh? That has been the oh. argument from, from most people. There are still some schools who have filed for a waiver, and they're, doing, they're still doing the paper model um, because they just don't have the, the technology at this point. Oh, so that would be the other alternative yeah. is paper. Right. But I think well, we have already done online. Do it online. Yeah. I think I don't know that you, you can't can go back. The high school has not, so yeah. this will be the first time for the high mm -hmm. school doing it online. But So we have done it already, so... Well, it's something that eventually we'll need, so yeah. might as well. And it's and it's Trusting. it's important that everybody understands it's not just for the MCAS testing. It will be oh, they no. will be used. Right. Oh yes. But the primary reason mm -hmm. why we want this is to make sure that when the kids are taking a test, mm -hmm. that we have up to date and current um, technology that will support the testing. Right. Yeah. And again, this is the first step in in a, a you know a, a short term, short to medium term planning around you know refreshing devices you know really across across all of our schools over the, over the next several years mm -hmm. um you know if, if as budget allows but right. I think we're hopeful mm -hmm. that um well at some point I, th I think some changes have to be made over the next few years with, with mm -hmm. um, across a few of the schools but we'd like to be able to refresh all of them at some point so the ipads are getting old enough now that even for classroom use right. they newer apps won't run on them they're not compatible with certain things and um they're physically starting to fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, we discussed, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's really important for this conversation, but the iPads that we currently have in, in the middle school will, will be sent to the elementary school, was that, that the plan? My, yes, we'll go through them, the get them, um, the ones that, the the ones ones that, that are, are still 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 right. in still enough right. shape. Yeah. Yeah. We'll move them down, so. We'll which, is, them. which is a plus, because now they've right. got some iPad 4s, they'll have some of the Chromebooks that will be available and, and mm -hmm. for the technology yeah. at the elementary So not only will the middle school benefit from, mm -hmm. from this, the, the elementary school will get some residual benefit right. Right. Um, out so of it as well. Right. right now they have iPad 2. So Why do we do Chromebooks? Is that because we do a lot of stuff through Google? We do. We yeah. have um, our emailed Google Google suite Docs. we use, so everything is on like Google Docs. Um, so these are compatible with that. You've got the keyboard built in. And they are just more for doing work. They just work better. Mm -hmm. um, they're just more compatible with more things. The iPads have their strengths right. for different types of things, and I think as long as we have iPads that are still functioning, you know, we, we, we will hold on to them, and they will, they're good for being used like there's a digital design class where they're taking, doing videos with them mm -hmm. and doing iMovie. And those kind of functions the iPad is great at, but for when the kids are writing, it's, it's difficult to yeah. do significant writing on an iPad. It's, it's not, yeah. I mean, obviously we've been doing it, it's possible, but it's but easier it's, yeah. on the Chromebooks. Mm. And we've just, in conversations, decided that for academics, the Chromebooks seem to be more compatible. Right. What about durability? Are they more durable? Like uh, um, It depends. Now this model here that I want to go with is like, I picked up, picked this model because they actually sent me a, they sent me a demo unit to try, and we actually, because um, they had sent, first they sent me a video and showed at some agricultural school them testing this. They had like, you know, the marching band walking on it. They had a cow stepping on it. They would, and it was still working. Oh, wow. well, I mean, you okay. obviously put covers on them anyway, but still, right? No, or this one, don't? I'm not sure oh, I would need to. I don't know. We do it. Oh, we right. have them on the high school ones yes. now, right? Yeah, in the high school but, ones there. So we had these two, and um, mm -hmm. myself and... Um, Mrs. Brown, part of my tech team, we set out to put it through its paces. Oh, wow. I did you voted. Down a flight of stairs? Yes, no, sir. we really? did. Yes. What finally did break oh, the screen oh, is. Yeah. <laughs> well, but we did. I knocked them off the tables. I, you know, 
stuff that would happen. Stuff that's yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I put stuff on top of it. Uh, Mrs. Brown slammed the cover down with keys on the keyboard because that's a big yeah. Um, yeah. cause of the broken screens is when it gets the kids put it down with the pen still on there. Um, I dropped it down the sidewalk. I dropped it down the stairs. But what finally did it is Mrs. Brown stood at the top of like uh, at the middle school looking down so it was like two flights and just dropped it straight down. Yeah. And that finally cracked the screen. But even with the screen cracked, you could still use it. Right. Wow. So I said, all right, mm -hmm. this, is, this is the model we want to go with. Mm -hmm. That's great. So. Yeah, it seems at the very least, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, it closes, so your screen's not exposed uh, yes. during those drops like an uh, iPad would be. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Right. Yeah. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Mm -hmm. We have language written in our, our memo from the motion. Um, I move to approve the purchase of 130 Chromebooks for the Douglas Middle School for up to $42,000 to be funded by the School Choice Tuition Revolving Fund. Second. Okay. Motion from Kelly, second from Julie. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none. Okay. Could Thank I just you. recognize Mrs. Souza for the for careful consideration in, in keeping us technologically sound on yeah. a... Um, Skinny budget. Yes. Yes. Great Thank job you. of being very pragmatic about how we continue to bring technology to the uh, district. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sounds Thank like you. she got to have a little fun though now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I didn't know she was throwing things down the down the, the stairs. <laughs> that, that's that's news to me. No, it wasn't school. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't school money. So good though. That's good. Okay. I'm glad you took advantage of it. Good. All right. So now we'll move on to our school business business and operation managers report. Let's keep it. Um, I do not have any transfers and reclassifications for you this evening. Uh, I will at the next meeting. Um, I did provide to you the FY 2019 general fund budget report after the, all those transfers were posted. So it's a pretty clean looking report. Um, looking very good. If you go to the last page, so the way this is, I have to kind of manually, um, so what I'm doing there, for those that, that don't know, the grand total, I have to actually back out the transportation and back out all of those numbers right, right straight across to come down to the operating budget. Yeah. In other words, to relate it to the appropriation for the, the general fund operating budget of the school. Yeah. Um, so we're doing very well. Um, you can see the balance there that's, that's unencumbered at this time. Um, there's a, a big difference now with the encumbrances in there with the teachers that you saw before, but also the transfers have been done as well. So things are looking fine, typically where we would be about this time of the year. So. Okay. That's, a, that's a good thing. We have had some things come up, you know, that we've had a budget for, but moving things around and everything. And yep. with transfers, we've been um, in good stead throughout the year. Yeah, that was the other thing. I'm, I, I, again, I apologize. We went over during our, our budget subcommittee so was just where we stand with regards to school choice. Um, Circuit Revolving fund. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think we've... We've not dipped too far into that this year. You know, just the, the 42,000 here, but other than that, um, we haven't really dipped that too far, and, which I think is in line with, you know, again, some of our thinking with, you know, the Board of Selectmen last year. We said, you know, I if we get the override, there's, there's thoughts around, okay, do we invest in a bunch of things right now, or do you keep your powder dry? And I think we're still in that keeping our powder dry, and we have some opportunities in front of us, which, which is good to know that we, we still have some of that to work with. So mm -hmm. it's good. I think we're in a good, good place. And, the, of course, and, and we've had these conversations, too, about thinking prospectively, not just one year, but being very how prudently conservative with the school rights, particularly the school choice, the circuit breaker because of the volatility there. But I think that with all of us working together, and putting aside that contingency as yep. well in school choice and circuit breaker, um, I think we're in we're in good stead and for moving moving forward. Um, and we'll yeah. see what we can implement going forward. But um, I think we're doing very well at this point. One thing about being on a lean budget is you learn to survive yeah, you, on a lean budget. We certainly lean. do. Yes. Yeah. And to be brutally conservative. <laughs> okay. Um, That's all I have this evening. Great. Thank you. Any topics not anticipated? Uh, yes, yeah, so I have one little thing just real quickly. Um, just to report back to you, I did check with all of our um, building principals with regards to the rescheduling of the parent-teacher conferences, and um, they felt that for the most part they had close to full anticipated um, conferences that took place on the okay. Wednesday evening. Um, a few, a few that had to cancel, but they have arranged and have had other 
opportunities to meet with the parents and the teachers, so they've made some arrangements for that. Uh, but that for the most part, um, nobody heard anything back from any any concerns from parents, nor did the central office hear anything. So just to, just to let you know about the rescheduling that it, all things considered, it, it, it appears to have worked out fine. Yeah, I think ultimately we, we made the right choice. I didn't hear a lot of kind of fallout afterwards. Actually, I didn't hear any fallout right. afterwards. Which is good. Um, you know, yeah. so you know, a little bit of concerns around, okay, what time do I have, or can I reschedule it, right. or whatever. And I think folks addressed that. You know, so you saw before. me split myself in four, because I had to be at the middle school, <laughs> the basketball, the high school. Well, that, I, I didn't hear about it. it. it doesn't mean there wasn't <laughs> any out there. You know? It was all good. <laughs> and then one other thing was that I, I plan on doing a one call tomorrow night. At the at, five, at dinner time, just to remind there. everybody it's an early release day on Friday, and wish everybody a, a happy holidays. Great, thank you. So, the, do we have any events going on during the break, or the building? There'll be some, uh, some basketball and, and track and so forth. I, there'll be some things going on for sure. Um, the track, t I hear that the, they did well at Reggie Lewis just the other last week. They did the Winter Festival, yep. the small school Winter Fest. Did, did very had well. a new school record in the Eight, four by eight hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, the girls four by eight hundred set a new school yeah. record. So. Great. Yeah. So um, we do not need executive session tonight. Um, we are still um, just working through the contract for for Mr. Maines. I think that should be probably. I imagine handled by like the January second meeting. Um, I, I would. Yeah. I would think it would be more than fine. I've only yeah. got so. one issue that I, I I think that we can talk about, and then I think we're good to yeah. go. So our next meeting will be January 2nd. We talked about it last time. Everyone should be able to make that. So yep. mm -hmm. and we'll do executive session there to finalize that. Yeah. So with that, I'll be looking for a motion to adjourn at 8.06. Nobody wants to go. <laughs> I'd make the motion, but it really doesn't matter. I'm that we adjourn. I'm to see how yes. long that's, that's here. <laughs> I have a motion from Julie to adjourn. Do you a second? Second. And second from Lisa. Thank you. Any other discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Seeing none, we are adjourned. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays.